Hi everybody, welcome back to Specs 12. Uh, we're doing our fourth day of our Enneagram, and today what we're going to do is extend the Enneagram to our relationships. Um, and we think this is really important for you because in the next six months, you'll be leaving HKS and you'll start your college career. And so this is a time for you to really think seriously about how you would like to end well uh, this stage of your life and some of those key relationships. So that's our goal for today. Before we get to that though, I want to talk about um, some of the uh, contradictions uh, within your own type, uh, which will give you some sympathy for not only yourself, but for the people you're trying to have relationships with. And this is one of the things I really like about the Enneagram, is that because you have your type and your wing next to each other, what you'll see is that, that we are contradictions living within one body. Um, and so let's talk about those very briefly, about some of those contradictions. So a nine wing one, right? A peacemaker and someone that wants to reform the world. So you can obviously see the nines are very accepting of people, whereas the ones are, are driven by change. So a contradiction. Let's try the one wing twos. One wing twos. Ones want to change the world, whereas twos want to maintain steady connections with relationships. Two wing threes. Twos are so big on relationships whereas threes value success over relationships. Three wing fours, outer achievement versus all the inner drama of a four. And they're within, again, within the same person. There are three wing fours and four wing threes, right? Scattered throughout the high school, throughout your, your senior year in your class. Um, fours and fives, it straddles the heart-mind divide and they have to come together. Fives and sixes, so fives uh, value ob objectivity, these are the researchers, whereas the six are loyal to their family and their culture and to their, and to their uh, religion oftentimes. So there can be some type of contradiction there. Sixes and sevens. Uh, sixes are generally quite humble and don't need uh, a lot of uh, recognition, whereas sevens thrive off of being kind of the life of the party. Seven wing eights. Uh, sevens are very popular, whereas eights value power. This comes together in the same uh, personality type. And then we're back to the, the eights and the nines again. So we have here the eights who have uh, overpower others oftentimes through their force of personality, where the nines are the peacemakers. And they, they again, are all within one person. So the idea is that all of us have contradictions. Uh, and we don't always understand why we do what we do. And now we have to we're, you know, take those contradictions and mix with other people who have contradictions. So it's understandable why we have uh, you know, conflicts in our relationships. So let's talk about what you're gonna, we want you to select several relationships to think about. Uh, it can be within your family. And we looked at that um, with uh, Ellie already uh, so far in our study that where she realized that she always uh, was achieving in order to impress her parents. Um, so there's always an intersection between your Enneagram type uh, and your relationships with people around you. Um, we also want to give you the opportunity here in Specs Hub, if you would like, to think about your, your dating relationship, your romantic life. It's a very important part of your maturation experience. Uh, but we oftentimes don't study this or talk about it in, in school. So here's your chance. So uh, there, you can think about uh, that these dating relationships in terms of the Enneagram. And we actually already talked about this with, with Katie, who uh, as a two wing three always wanted validation from her uh, boyfriend. Um, and she said that this was a, actually a struggle if, if he was not affectionate enough. And so you can see that it's quite directly applicable your Enneagram type to other, other people's in your, your relationships. So let me just tell you one story uh, of how this could help you. Um, so uh, last year, uh, a mother came to me and said, you know, I'd really like to talk to you about my son. I don't really understand what to do. I'm really at my wit's end. Um, and she explained the situation, I listened, and I really wasn't sure what to say. And I really didn't know uh, either of them very, very well. And because I was teaching the Enneagram, I said, well, why don't we sit down and actually look at the Enneagram, see if this could help. And so we first identified her type. So she was a type six, 
And you know that the sixes are the most anxiety ridden of all the types and they tend to catastrophize. Uh, and she said, yep, that's me. And we can see that she was very worried about her son uh, and, and really driving him crazy by always kind of criticizing him and, and questioning him, being suspicious of, of what he's doing. Meanwhile, the, the son really did have issues. Uh, he was a big time gamer. And as, uh, as we looked at his Enneagram type, according to the mother, she said, oh, he is a two wing three, which is the host or hostess. Uh, and so what she was able to understand is that the gaming was a way for him to maintain all these relationships that he, he felt is absolutely essential to his identity. And so it was really a, a major conflict in, in the home because he wanted to stay popular uh, and he was, his grades were tanking. Meanwhile, the mother was watching them, the grades go down and she was very, very worried about him and we kept uh, kind of hovering over him and you, uh, you can see the, the conflict. Okay? So when I talked to the mother and she's able to understand her son and understand herself, she said, I realize you know, my son is not going to change very, very likely. Uh, the easiest person to change is myself. Um, and that's what she did and it did improve. I don't know how well, but it did improve the home situation. She thanked me on numerous times, wrote me emails thanking me for taking the time to explain the family dynamics. Uh, and she took the books home that you guys have and tried to understand her, herself and her family better. Um, and this would be, I, I think that would be my main uh, hope for you as you look at the Enneagram, is that you give grace to other people to try to understand their type and you would try to really change yourself uh, because it's very hard to change other people, but hopefully you can understand yourself and try to upgrade your own type. So what we're gonna have you do today uh, is we want you to look at this fabulous resource, the Enneagram Institute website, uh, and try to find these significant relationships and try to uh, understand um, what may be their type and try to find um, the, the, the descriptions of the strengths and weaknesses of this pairing. So you go to the Enneagram Institute website, you're gonna say, uh, go to Enneagram type two, and you scroll down there to find it says compatibility with other types. Uh, and then you hit the one that you're most interested. And so then you come up with, for instance, Enneagram type two, the helper with Enneagram type nine, the peacemaker. Uh, and then it has like two paragraphs on the strengths of these two types together. And then like two paragraphs on kind of their pitfalls and weaknesses. So I think this is really a fabulous uh, uh, resource for you to see. And so what we're gonna ask you to do, uh, we have an organizer for you to go through and try to understand uh, the, the two, your two types and how they interact. And then we're gonna ask you to do some type of uh, practice to see if you can improve those relationships. So good luck on day four of the Enneagram. Really hope that you can uh, improve your relationships with people that are really important to you.